As I sit here today, I'm excited about learning new things and finding a way to contribute to what NASA's doing. It makes me feel like a kid again. I grew up in Montana, Colorado, and Washington. Both my parents are from Montana, so I'm definitely a Montana girl through and through, but I went through high school in Washington, so I kind of consider Richland, Washington my hometown. I grew up with really supportive parents. I always had everything I need, and then there were two really big events that were pretty formative for me. Police say 14 people may be injured after shots, explosions, and a fire were reported at suburban Denver's Columbine High School. The Columbine shooting happened about an hour from where I went to school. And so that was the first time my eyes were kind of opened to realizing that, you know, the world was a little bit more complicated and a little bit darker than, you know, most fifth graders really imagine. And then when I was in eighth grade, September 11th happened. It's 8.52 here in New York. I'm Brian Dumble. We understand that there has been a plane crash on the uh, southern tip of Manhattan. You're looking at the uh, World Trade Center. We understand that a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. I think I learned a lot from watching the country respond and that was inspiring to me. So I think those things together kind of made me think about how can I contribute? What strengths and weaknesses do I have to try to contribute to a team of people who really wants to make a difference in the world? And the Naval Academy seemed like the best place to really come to do something that made a difference to the people around me, to my community, to the country. Rise. The Naval Academy is a really unique experience. No matter how much you think you learned about it ahead of time, you show up for induction day and it's you get pretty shell-shocked. So help you God. I remember just being super overwhelmed and when I got up to my company area, my classmate trapped into my room and so she got out my shipment regulations and showed me how to figure out how to fold all my stuff and arrange my closet. Our mission here is to train each one of you to become a midshipman at the United States Naval Academy. For me, the most defining characteristic of the Naval Academy that made it a great place for me to be developed was the incredible mentors. One of the reasons you are sitting in these desks is because of the tradition that grew out, through the tradition of education that grew out of Greek rationalism. You know, my freshman year, my Western civilization teacher, Captain Fryman, he asked me if I was ever interested in applying for graduate school. And I'd literally never thought about that before. At the time, I might have thought it was just an offhand comment. You know, here I've got a smart, curious kid that I see uh, with a tremendous amount of potential. It probably just came out, you know, as an offhand remark. It's one thing to hear advice from someone who you've just met or barely talked to or can't relate to. But there were a ton of mentors I had here who really got to know me, really challenged me, and really knew who I was. And sometimes saw things in me that I hadn't even recognized in myself yet. And that's the kind of mentorship that really matters. And that's just one example of many, whether you know it's Karen Boyle, my cross country coach, who always pushed me to run faster, to train harder, to contribute more to the team. First group, ready, go. Good job, ladies. All the way through the cone. Excellent, good job. Kayla is one of those people who will never, ever brag about herself. She has amazing humility. When we were competing against West Point, this was the year when Kayla was a manager because she was coming off an injury. Speaking of humility, you know, here's a person who was a varsity letter winner her freshman year now being a manager. And so in this one meet, as Kayla was videotaping, as they're coming over the hill toward us, she starts yelling, oh my God, Amy's winning. Oh my God. Amy is winning. That was like one of our all-time phrases that will stick with me forever because that tells us how unselfish, one, how motivated she is, and, and as a leader, how she can contribute, even not running. Keep it up, babe! I give her credit because who knows, without her in that role at that moment, we may not have won. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. I'm so happy right now. I definitely think the foundation 
I got at the Naval Academy for learning how to be a member of a, lots of different kinds of teams translated into my experience in the submarine warfare community. As early as next year, women will be where they haven't been allowed to serve before, aboard Navy subs. The Naval Academy is kind of this protective bubble. You know, things might feel stressful, but really you have a crazy safety net there to catch you if you fall or fail. In the submarine fleet, you know, we're out there doing real missions with real equipment and real people. Like our lives are on the line and we have to work together in order to operate in this really complex environment. Coming back to the Naval Academy has been a fantastic opportunity. Coming back here as the aide to the superintendent of the Naval Academy uh, was a defining moment for her. When I came back to start my job here, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do next. I wasn't sure if I wanted to stay in the Navy, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do if I didn't. The reconnecting with midshipmen, the faculty, the staff, the institution which really started it for her, uh, made her see her future, uh, whether it was going to be in the submarine force or something else, in a whole different new light. It just so happened that there were a couple of instances where I was exposed to the astronaut office. I met his classmate, Kay Heyer. Kay was a classmate of mine from 1981, the second woman in uh, our class to go into space after uh, the pioneer, uh, Wendy Lawrence. And I think Kayla was very impressed with Kay Heyer. Talking to her was the first time I started to realize that there were a lot of parallels between working on a submarine and working in space. And I think that kind of kindled, you know, a little bit that interest of going, huh. And then a few weeks after that, we went to this big event at the Air and Space Museum. But as we were pulling up to this event, I told the soup, I said, you know, sir, I've actually kind of been thinking about the astronaut program lately. And he kind of raised his eyebrows because I'd never, he was the first person that I'd ever said this out loud to. As we got in the car, she said, you know, I could really see myself doing that. And I said, you mean being, becoming a NASA astronaut? She said, yeah, but it's, it's, it's too big, it's too much, it, it's, just, it's just a dream. I knew that I was interested, but I knew there was a lot to learn, and I also was almost already afraid to fail. And the Admiral, I think, kind of sensed that a little bit. And he looked at me and he just said, Kayla, do you know how you become an astronaut? And I answered honestly, which was, no, sir, not really. Um, and he looked back at me and looked me right in the eye and just said, you apply. And I think that mentorship at that key moment was really important. The selection committee had let us know that we're gonna call you on May 25th to let you know whether you got it or not. So we knew she was gonna get the big phone call on that day. We also knew that we were going to do a formal parade that day. And the one time that whole day I was not gonna be able to have my phone was during the color parade. The brigade commanded by the captain, Isabella Rowe of Annapolis, Maryland. Lieutenant Kayla Barron, as my aide, was standing behind, you know, the distinguished guests and the formal party, actually counting the guns to the honors for our reviewing officer. And before the parade ended, somehow the phone rang and obviously she couldn't answer it. I did the parade, I got back to my phone, I picked it up, it was 12.04 and I had a missed call from Houston at 12.03. And the superintendent came up and I was like, sir, I missed the call by one minute. You know, and he was telling me to call him back, but it wasn't a number you could call back and they didn't leave a message. So I just had to wait about 45 minutes for them to, you know, get back through the rotation and call me back. And so when I answered the phone, Brian Kelly, he asked me, are you still interested in coming down to be a part of the next astronaut candidate class? It's the easiest question I've ever had to answer. Good afternoon, America. The 2017 astronaut candidates, Kayla Barron. It's exciting. It's going to be a special cadre of young men and women. And to think that somebody, maybe in our lifetime, could actually step foot on Mars uh, and maybe be a Naval Academy graduate, maybe even be somebody like Lieutenant Caleb Barron, uh, it's inspirational. Thinking about 
going into space and pushing the boundaries of what we've done before is really exciting. It's really an honor to get the chance to go and be a part of what NASA's doing and what they're going to be doing over the next 15 or 20 years. I feel super lucky to be in a position to contribute to that in any way I can. And somehow they decided to grant me that opportunity to go to succeed. So I take it really seriously and I want to do my best.